Hello everyone, and welcome to Star 3D Channel. In this video, I'll show you how to use the tools under the Asset section of the menu bar. So, let's get started. The first feature I'll cover is the Edit Texture tool. We need to import a new texture. You can open the library on the right to find a new texture. Then we press Ctrl A to select all the pieces, then click right on the fabric to apply our stripe material to all the pieces. Now, if you can't see the fabric in the 2D window, just click Cloth Texture Surface 2D in the left floating bar. Click on the 2D pattern and it will display the axial direction of the texture. Then we can drag our texture direction we can see that the blue and the gray texture move together. Now there is another way to do this. We can move the axis in the upper right to move and scale the texture. Note that the properties changed here are for all the pattern pieces used in this fabric, not just one single piece. You may find that changing the direction of its texture will not change the direction of the warped and weft yarn. So these are the differences in the two methods of editing textures. Next is Fabric Layout. We can open this function to enter a new interface, which is our layout area. We can directly place the pattern pieces in our layout area. If it is necessary for later production, we can export these pattern pieces directly to print the layout. The third one is Transform Graphic. We can just double click on this and put it in our 2D or 3D pattern piece. Then go back to transform graphic and then we can scale it. There are some properties of the corresponding graphic. We can choose the artwork technology to make the graphics more realistic. For example, we can select this embroidery and we can see its style change in the 3D window in real time. You can do more fine tuning to the graphics here. The next feature is seam taping, which can add linings to the edge of the pattern pieces to prevent it from deforming. You can also select the edge of the 2D pattern piece in edit pattern mode, and then go into the property editor, where you can also find seam taping. The next tool is button. We can add buttons directly to any position on the 2D pattern piece. You can also right click on the inner line or sewing line to bring up the window to add buttons along the lines. We can set the number of buttons to be added and the spacing of the buttons to be added. Buttonhole is also used in the same way. We can add buttonholes directly in the 2D window by clicking on the pattern piece or right clicking on the edge or inner line. Buttons and buttonholes can be adjusted in the property editor on the right. Now that I've explained the first two, we will move on to the next one, which is the fasten button tool. We can directly click the button to connect to the buttonhole and it will make this connection action. We can delete them by selecting them in button or buttonhole mode. Next is the zipper tool. We can directly draw the zipper on the pattern piece edge in the 2D window. Double click to end, then draw a second zipper in the same way. Note that this feature requires us to remove any obstructing sewing lines first.
We can also edit the zipper's style or width, etc. in the property editor. Next is the top stitch tool. There are two ways to add top stitching. This is the segment top stitch and free top stitch tools. Its operating principle is similar to the sewing function. Segment top stitch will automatically help us identify the line segment between two endpoints. Use Edit Top Stitch to change the style of the top stitch and select presets in the top stitch library. We can set the width and the offset of the lines here. In Free Top Stitch, you can freely choose the starting point and end point to which the top stitch will be added. Next is the Piping Tool. You can directly select the start and end point of the line in the 2D window and then click some points in the middle to make sure that the recognition of the line continues. Double click to end the selection. Now you can see the effect in the 3D window. The type of piping can also be selected in the property editor window. Its shape can be round or flattened. You can also set up a separate fabric for the piping and adjust its width. Now we have puckering. Now this does not actually make the pattern piece crimp, but adds the pleated effect to the lines of the garment. We can use segment puckering to demonstrate. Just click on the line here and it creates the puckering effect. You can also use the free puckering tool. You can select the starting point and its finishing point freely. We can also select its different puckering types and fabric type. Under Edit Puckering, we can select the effect to delete it. So the asset tools here are actually pretty simple and include adding some fine details after you finish constructing your garment. You guys can try it out by practicing on these two review points. The first point is to drag the texture direction directly in the 2D window. You will view that the blue and the gray yarn will move in sync. The second point is in piping. Click a start and end point and also some points halfway to ensure that the line recognition continues. This will allow your piping to be added accurately. So that's it from me guys. I hope some of our tips help you with your 3D creations. If you like what we do, please like, comment and share this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.